Hello, my name is Joe with Prince Telecom, contractor for Charge Communications. Today I'm going to explain how to set up a standard cable modem and a wireless cable modem. Everything down here is in location of the Lillington Charter Office and all modems are of their property. All this information pertains to this office and the area surrounding it. Now, a big misconception is that people think we can hook up internet without a computer. Computers are the only way we can get into the modems. Especially wireless ones, we have to have a computer to set the wireless network and be able to activate it to your name and password. The only way to get into these is using an Ethernet port to plug into the back of them. Now, the easiest way to tell if you have a cable modem or a DSL modem is to check the port on the back part of the modem. The cable port allows you to tell if it requires a cable line or a DSL phone line. This is a big problem we have with customers thinking that they already own their own modem when they do not. This solves a lot of problems just by the simple check. Now there are two types of modem speeds and you can tell by which modem they are. You have a DOCSIS 2 modem and a DOCSIS 3 modem. DOCSIS 2 modems are good for 1 through 15 megs. Anything above 15 megs requires a DOCSIS 3 modem and they can go all the way up to 100 megs in our system. Now there's no real main difference between DOCSIS 2 and DOCSIS 3 besides the style. This is a DOCSIS 2 and a DOCSIS 3 wireless. As you see the DOCSIS 2 has an antenna the DOCSIS 3 does not. Just because one has an antenna doesn't make a difference. A wireless can be without an antenna. The easiest way to tell is the 1 through 4 ports on the front is the easiest way to tell if it's a router. Also the, all the ports in the back. Now when setting up a modem you have it connected to cable. These four lights I have circled here are the uh, key of if it's online or if it's got proper signal. You have the power light, the DS, the US, and the online. The DS is downstream, US is upstream. Once they all lock in and turn solid, you know you're ready to rock and roll. The online help line helps you determine if you're ready to, to go online and actually have pulled a valid IP address. Now a lot of people think that when the DS light turns uh, orange, red, sometimes green, blue, it just depends on the modem, that they have a bad modem. That is incorrect. This is a process we call DOCSIS2 bonding and it just means there are two channels powering that modem to give you better speeds. Now when you set up a modem, you have to have it hardwired into a CPU because Without a wireless, with wireless built in, it has to be set up and provisioned to the proper port. When you hardwire into it, this allows you to go into the charter installation page and provision the modem, which is which gives you access to your internet service provider. Now, this is an example of the uh, charter provisioning page, which is the basis of how to set up a modem. You have to go through this page to get your modem provisioned, which means to get it set up to the ISP, which is your internet service provider, which allows you to access the internet. You have to be paying and to get to charter recommendations to get to this page. Now, after that, this is where we talk about networking. This is how you set up your wireless devices and allows you to uh, get your wireless computers because, face it, these days almost everything is wireless, from phones to laptops to any other device. Almost everything has a built-in wireless capability now. So wireless is now the best way to go. Now, to get when you hardwire into a modem and you want to go into it to set up your wireless network, you need an uh, internet IP address in your address bar. The three listed below are the most common IP addresses in this area. Um, sometimes they vary, but most of the time you can find them online if you have internet access. Now, once you enter this IP address, you will get to what we call the login page. This is where you require a username and password. Listed below are the four main uh, modems brands we use in this area and their network name and password. You need these to access it to set up your personal Netgear name and password. I mean modem name and password. Now this is a standard login page up. I use my Netgear wireless router so I use the admin password and this is the front page that explains to you how to set everything up. Now once you're in the modem you have to look for very specific settings. The first one is wireless settings. This is how you go in and check to make sure that you can set up for wireless settings. Usually if there's no wireless settings available, then you're not using a wireless modem. Now, once you get into the wireless router setting page, there are several things you need to look for. The first one is, you'll see the name or the SSID, which is your, your network name for your modem. Um, I'll use, most people set it as their last name. You can set it just about anything you want. Um, your SSID is how when you search with any wireless device what you'll find. So make it something appropriate usually but you can set it to whatever you want. 
Now here I've got shown with the basic security setting of WEP. WEP allows you to pick a 10 digit number to set up as your password. I like this because I like to use customers phone numbers when setting up their, their network so it's easy, something easy for them to remember. Now you can use any 10 digit number and allow you to access to, to your wireless. Now the WPA is a different beast. Uh, WPAs can go anywhere from 8 characters to 64 characters. And what it is is it can be names, numbers, capitals, lower cases. It allows you to build a more versatile password but also it's hard to lock you out. Here are just the basic descriptions of both of those password types WP being on top and the WPA at the bottom. I personally recommend WEP because the 10 digit number is a lot easier to remember and allows you access to the modem better. Um, once you go through all this setup, uh, as long as you apply all your settings, you should be ready to rock and roll. Uh, I don't want to buy this really fast, but I mean, just remember modem plugged in, get your lights, hardwire into it, log into the page, set your password, set your name, and after that, you're ready to rock and roll online. Uh, now, once you're in line, if you have a Mac, this is kind of the general setup. Uh, you want to look for all the lights that say Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi setting, ISP, Internet, server. All this means is that you have officially locked onto the Internet and you should